last night while I was at a birth, one of my fellow friends at Mother Birth posted a link um, of a post that kind of went viral. In fact, an hour ago it had 4,000 um, shares of a woman who had said that if you're in Acadiana and you're pregnant, um, while the hurricane's hitting, you're supposed to kind of lay on your back and not get up throughout the, uh, the storm because the pressure changes might cause you to go into labor or worse, a subchorionic hemorrhage. And so I'm here to kind of debunk this a little bit and give you guys some information so that you are not living through this storm in fear if you're pregnant. My name is midwife Kyra and I am the midwife here in Lafayette's only birth center called the Natural Birth House. I believe in truly natural birth because I know that it makes for better birth experiences. So I encourage you guys to come subscribe to my channel on YouTube and follow me each week. So last I saw, um, Hurricane Barry's track had been moved just a little bit west and he's actually heading right for us right here in Lafayette. I know that that's creating a lot of anxiety. The winds aren't supposed to be so bad, but the flooding's supposed to be pretty intense. And so um, I really want you guys to have some factual information. So let's start with the barometric pressure myth. Um, there are rumors going around, or what I would like to say is really their old wives tales going around, that say that when hurricanes come, we're more likely to go into labor. Now, this has not actually, actually been generally accepted. Um, there are studies that have been done on this, and there's only one that actually showed a correlation. So this study in 2006 studied about, I think it's like 64,000 pregnant women over six years, and they said that they found a statistical increase in women who delivered during the storm spontaneously but i couldn't find really any information on those numbers everything else that i researched to um make this video basically just said that this is an old wives tale in fact the uh, vice president and the ceo of acog said this is definitely an old wives tale but assuming that it might actually be true, um, the idea is that the drop in the barometric pressure that comes with the hurricane will actually cause our water to break. And as you know, or hopefully that you know, your water breaking is an imminent sign of labor and it, um, the pressure dropping might cause your water to break. Um, also, the idea is that it will occur within three hours of the barometric pressure dropping. I don't believe that this is a real thing. If the storm comes and you've got a three, the first like three hour window, if your water hasn't broken, I think you can rest easy knowing that you're probably fine. There's really very little evidence to support the idea that women deliver more or more likely to deliver in low barometric pressures. So I want you guys who are pregnant to know tonight that you can rest easy, that um, you really shouldn't expect anything too significant. However, when I was making the video, I have a, an Apple Watch here and it has the moon phase on it and I see that we're almost at a full moon. So I can imagine there's some women who are a little nervous because we've got the storm coming and a full moon right around the corner. But again, you can rest easy knowing that the chance of you kicking into labor are probably pretty slim. Now, what about a subchorionic hemorrhage as the previous Facebook post mentioned? Well, first of all, a subchorionic hemorrhage is, it's a small collection of blood that can collect between like the placenta and the uterine wall. And typically it's pretty harmless in pregnancy, but it does bring about some pretty scary bleeding. And I know that that can be terrifying for all of us when we're pregnant. Um, the thing about subchorionic hemorrhage is we really don't know what causes it. And thankfully it's generally not a problem. So, there's no reason at all to believe that you cannot get up and walk around and live your normal physical activity during your um during the storm while you're pregnant barometric pressure drops is not linked to subchorionic hemorrhage for sure without a doubt for a fact okay so let's put that one to rest you know what does kick you into labor though? Stress. One thing you need to know is the best thing to do during this type of time when we are dealing with hurricanes is to have a plan in place to prevent increased stress. Now, as we probably all know, hurricanes can subject pregnant women to negative conditions like a disruption in the water supply, environmental toxins, like if it floods outside and we have to kind of wade through that water, and of course, an interruption in healthcare. In fact, in dealing with this with one of my clients right now who is currently due, and we're having to decide whether or not we're going to keep the birth house open during this flood, and so it's looking like we're needing to make a plan to have the hospital nearby just in case because, you know, you don't want to have any interruptions in your health care. 
Stress can also cause high blood pressure. So if you're dealing with high blood pressure issues and you're finding yourself really stressed out with the storm, you may need to talk with your healthcare provider today about what to do. Now, keeping in mind, the storm's expected to hit later tonight, early tomorrow, and so it might be too late to make a plan to get out of town. I think most of us are kind of hunkering down. Also, stress can cause premature delivery. Now, I don't want this to stress you out even more, but um, it is something to consider. And so I really want you guys to have a plan in place to keep your stress levels down to a minimum. Um, who should be stressing during the storm is something that uh, I wanna touch on a little bit. Well, first of all, I know that pregnant women who were term, which is 37 weeks or above, your due date being at 40, of course, moms who are pregnant with twins or anyone else who, who may have been told that they were at risk may be stressing a lot more than normal right now. Um, and like I said, having a plan in place is really good to kind of reduce the stress. So if you're term, if you're pregnant with twins, you may want to consider getting a hotel near the hospital just in case you have a problem um, or you kick into labor. Just it could be complete coincidence. It may not be the barometric pressure. Um, how far you are away from the hospital? Did your neighborhood flood in 2016? Um, these are things you might want to know. Other things I thought of while I was making this uh, video was um, you can get the Waze app, that's W-A-Z-E, and Waze will actually tell you which streets are flooded and like, um, what's the word, closed off, and give you alternative routes to get to where you need to go. So this can be really useful um, during uh, flooding, which we're expecting. I would also have backup phone chargers um, in case you need to reach anybody, such as emergency services in case you do kick into labor. and. I know this is a little controversial, but I really want you guys to know how to deliver your baby on your own just in case you get stuck with doing that. And I'm gonna touch on that later in this video, so stay tuned to that. So let's touch on first signs and symptoms of labor. With stress going on and um, of course barometric pressure is a possibility as that 2006 study said, um, you may experience some more Braxton Hicks contractions than usual. Braxton Hicks contractions are completely harmless. They are just tightening of the abdomen and they're just kind of warm up stuff and prep stuff for labor. You can even have Braxton Hicks contractions like several an hour and this is all okay. What I would recommend you do if you do have Braxton Hicks contractions during the, uh, the storm is that you hydrate really heavily and you try and just rest and kind of take it easy and let things pass. But Braxton Hicks contractions are not an imminent sign of labor and neither is losing your mucus plug. So this is definitely something not to stress too much about if this happens. However, um, more imminent signs of labor, obviously if your water broke, that is an imminent sign of labor. And I'm gonna tell you what to do about that in just a minute. Um, but active labor contractions, these are contractions that are crampy, like a menstrual cramp, and they wrap around to your back. They get stronger, longer, and closer together. Technic typically, they'll start with like more than six an hour, and they'll gain intensity as time goes on. If you start to have those, you're probably in labor and should make a plan to get yourself to the hospital. Um, in the flood, we don't really know how EMS is going to work, so make sure you and your husband have a plan in place to deal with this in case EMS um, is not available for some reason. Could be just fine, but you know, just in case, worst case scenario. So let's say the storm is actively happening and it is actively raining and wind and flood and you start to notice these signs. I want to talk to you guys about what, what would um, be worth getting out in the storm, going to the hospital, and what you might want to wait until the storm passes before you make a move. So during the storm, if you start actively bleeding, and I'm talking free bleeding, not like a little spot like your mucus plug is coming out. I'm talking if you start bleeding, particularly gushes of blood, or you're wiping and you're having a lot of red blood on a towel, you need to go to the hospital. I don't care how bad the storm is. If you're actively bleeding in your third trimester, you need to go to the hospital. Um, if your water broke and you have a premature baby, so if your baby's less than 37 weeks, you might want to consider getting up and going to the hospital because we don't want you to accidentally deliver a preemie outside of the hospital. They might need some NICU support. Um, and if you've been told that you have high blood pressure, possibly preeclampsia, or another symptom would be like a severe headache that's not relieved by Tylenol, it's, it would be worth getting up and going to the hospital during the storm if you're having any symptoms like that. But if you're not having those symptoms, but you are maybe having early signs of labor, such as uh, contractions maybe 10 to 15 minutes apart, or um, losing your mucus plug or things like that, 
if you're over 37 weeks, you can wait until the storm passes to go to the hospital. I would recommend you would go when your contractions are about five minutes apart or so, especially if you're um, your term, because you could actually be in active labor. If your water breaks and you are term, and it's been less than six hours and the storm's almost over, I would kind of recommend you hang on at home. I'll call the hospital and let them know, but maybe you should hang on at home a little bit and not get out in the storm for this, unless you are having active labor contractions at the same time. Emergency childbirth. So what I like to tell my clients is, this is what happens if the baby comes before you get to the hospital or to your midwife. If you've watched these YouTube videos where um, moms are accidentally having their babies in the car while they're driving to the hospital, the one thing they all have in common is that moms are so stunned that it's happened that they just grab their babies and they put them straight onto their shirts and just in amazement and hold their babies. If you have your baby un, um, unexpected without anybody around, your baby needs to be kept warm and dry and your shirt's not gonna be enough. You need to literally put your baby skin to skin. So strip off all your clothes, take off your bra and warm your baby against the warmth of your skin completely connected. Um, and if you happen to be in the car when this happens and you don't have any towels handy, dad can take off his shirt and he can dry the baby and you can tuck the baby up underneath your shirt until you can get to the hospital. Um, term babies simply need like the warmth of their mother and the milk from her breast and they typically do just fine on the way to the hospital. Now, if you have a baby with a cord born, uh, born with a cord around the neck, because I know that this is a common concern, I need you guys to know that this is really typically not a big deal. Over one third of babies are born with the cord wrapped around the neck and it does not impede labor. So if your baby's being born and you see the cord around your neck, you simply just unwrap it and put the baby, again, straight to your skin, uh, skin to skin on your chest. Um, cord around the neck is not a medical emergency in most instances and nothing you, need, you guys need to panic about. If your baby is a little bit stunned and needs um, a little bit of resuscitation or like a, a rescue breath to kind of puff them up, you simply put your mouth around baby's nose and mouth and you give just a gentle, gentle blow. And typically for babies who are born pretty quickly, they come around really quickly, but you may need to provide two or three uh, extra breaths to kind of help baby come around. Sometimes they're just really stunned about what's going on. Sometimes they have really fast bursts. They're not even really sure that they're here. And providing that little puff um, into their lungs will inflate their lungs and give them the oxygen they need. And typically they will fight you off. They don't want any part of you breathing for them. And that's a good sign of a nice, healthy baby. Now, what to do with the placenta? So if you call 911, one of the first things that they're gonna tell you is cut the cord, cut the cord. And I think we're kind of getting into a culture of delayed cord clamping where we kind of expect this to be routine. But in case you're not familiar with this or if um, EMS tells you something completely different, you do not need to cut the baby's umbilical cord. In fact, I would recommend against it if you don't have sterile scissors. Um, you could leave the baby attached to the placenta until you get to the hospital and they can detach the baby for you. There's no harm in leaving the baby and the placenta attached, so guys, don't stress about that at all. It's not at the top of the list on what to do if you deliver your baby outside of the hospital by surprise. When you're in the hospital or at home or at the birth center with a midwife, we have access to bleeding medications. Um, typically, the most common one would be Pitocin. But let's say you have your baby in the car or you have your baby at home unplanned. Um, so this might be a little bit out there for some of you guys, but the placenta can actually be used as a bleeding medication or in place of a medication. So hear me out. You can actually cut off a little tiny piece of the placenta and put it in your cheek and it will stop bleeding. I've seen it, I've experienced it. I try not to use it because obviously that's a little out there when we have Pitocin but in a low resource um, situation, such as delivering in your car during a flood, the placenta can save your life. So this is something that I think everybody should know. And like I said, I know it's out there, but if it's gonna save your life, I think it's worth it. So you definitely wanna consider that if you find that you're having a little bit more bleeding after the birth than you would expect. 
Now for those of you who are watching this video and are not pregnant, I'd really like it if you take your prenatal vitamins because it's very common during hurricanes that we have a little baby boom in nine months and it could totally be you. In which case, you know you can find me at the Natural Birth House and I'd love to see you guys. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you guys on Midwife Monday on my Cajun Stark YouTube channel. Bye-bye.